Hey, it's Harcourt from Play. In the last video in our navigation series, we talked about Play's native tab bar that lets you link different pages in your project to different tabs, and all that's done natively. We know a lot of people want the tab bar, but they don't want it to look like Apple's native tab bar. And in this case, you'd create a custom tab bar, which you can do in Play. We're gonna do this by creating a component that changes between an unselected and selected state. That's gonna be each tab bar icon. We're gonna group those together to create the tab bar, and then we're going to load in a different page into a page loader as the user taps on each icon. So let's dive into it. I have this home page, and this page is completely empty. The first thing we'll do is create that tab bar icon component. So let's add a new SVG to our page. You can double click to select which icon that I've already uploaded. So I have this home icon here. Now all we need to do is press this turn into component button, and now this is a component and we can double click on the name to rename it to be tab bar icon. Now I'm gonna open this in the main component editor because I wanna add another state and see both states as I'm editing. So let's do that. We can add a new state here, create a custom state, and we can just name this active. Excellent. So now we can style each of the states to make them visually distinct. So let's start with the default state. We want this to be less prominent than the active state. So I'm gonna change the tint color to be a gray, maybe that color there. Now you can see that the active state has inherited the properties from the default state, but we can override them in this active state. So now let's select that SVG. In this case, I'm gonna use one of the system styles to create this blue color. Great. While we're in the main component editor, let's add an interaction that changes this tab bar icon from the default state to the active state when tapped. It doesn't matter which state we create this on because interactions are across states, they're at the component level. So in interaction mode on the SVG, I'm gonna add a tap trigger. And on the tap trigger, we are going to add a set state action. We're going to target the component, so the tab bar icon, and we're gonna change the end state to be active. We're also gonna turn on invert other instances because we're gonna create several instances of this tab bar icon and we only want one to be selected at any time. We can also turn on or off the animate switch if we wanted to animate from the default to selected state. I do not, so I'm gonna turn off animate. And now let's try this out on our iOS device. I double tap to reset. And now when I tap, you can see it changes from that gray color, the default state, to the blue color in the selected state. So now we can go back to our home page. Let's take this, go into design mode, and I'm gonna hold down the option key to duplicate and drag my component to duplicate this and turn it into an instance. Here's our first instance. I'm gonna do this three more times to create the other three instances. And now we can swap out which SVG is in each of these icons. So let's do the second one. Let's make this a calendar. Let's make this a chart and let's make this one the profile. Excellent. So now I'm going to grab all four of these. And I'm going to do command G to group these all in a stack. And now we can title this tab bar. And now we can style this stack to create to make it look like a tab bar. So we're going to first set the width to be fill. So it's going to fill the entire bottom of the screen. We're then going to change the alignment to be center doesn't really matter because these are all the same size, but just to keep things consistent. And then I'm gonna change the distribution from start to one of these space between, space around or space evenly. I'm gonna do space evenly. You can do this based on your personal preference. All this customization is based on your personal preference. Next, let's add a little bit of bottom and top padding. So I'm gonna go into the padding slider. First, let's add maybe eight points of padding to the top. And then for the bottom, we're gonna turn on the bottom safe area. This is gonna be different depending on the user's device. Next, we're gonna pin this to the bottom of the page. So I'm gonna pin it, and then we're gonna turn on the switch that says pin to page. So this way it always stays in place, even as we scroll down the page. Now I can take the tab bar and drag it onto my page. That's the first part. Next, we need to add the page loader to our page so we can choose which page is loaded in. So let's add the page loader, and I'm just drop it on my page. I'm also going to pin it to my page. So we can pin it to the center, 
And then in my layers panel, I'm going to take the page loader and I'm going to move it below the tab bar. So that way the tab bar is always going to be on top of whatever is loaded in, in this page loader, page loader. Now by default, we want our app to start on the home page. So we're going to do two things. First, we're going to load page one into the page loader. And we can do this by pressing select page and selecting which page in our project we'd like to load in. So we'll do page one. Next, we want to take the icon associated with page one, and we want to change it to be the active state. Now that we can see the tab bar on top of the page loader, there needs to be a little bit more distinction. So I'm going to select my, page, or my tab bar and I'm gonna turn on some material blur. So we're gonna to go to the appearance panel, to this blur sub panel and just flip on material blur. And now we can adjust which material we'd like to use. I'm gonna use regular system. And you can choose the appearance as well. Choose if you want it to be auto, light or dark mode. Again, depending on how you want your design to look. Excellent. So now let's add some interactions that change which page is loaded into the page loader when the user taps on any of the other tabs. So before, when we added the interaction that switched between the default state and the selected state, we created that on the main component because we want it to apply to all instances. But when we're loading in different pages, we want that to be on the instance level. So for example, when I click on this um, home icon, I always want this to load in page one. When I click on this second one, this calendar, I always want it to load in page two. Those are going to be on the instance level. So let's get started setting those up. So I'm going to go into interaction mode and on that SVG, you can see we already have this main component interaction. Now I'm going to add a tap trigger again on the instance level. And from here, we're going to do a set page loader. We're going to select the page loader. So that's this page loader one. And then we're going to select the page that we want to be loaded in. So I am going to do page two because that's what is going to be loaded when we tap on this calendar icon. You can also choose the animation and you can choose if you want to remove the page that was previously in there. So now on my iOS device, I can tap that second icon. It's going to change the state to be the selected state. It's going to revert the state of the home icon that was in the selected state or the active state back to the default state. And it's going to change page two as the page that's loaded into this page loader. So now we need to do that same thing for all the other ones. So I'm going to take this tap trigger. I'm going to do command C to copy it. And now I'm going to go on to each one of these and paste it on each icon that we paste this on. All we need to do is select the page and change it. So for the third one, we want to do page three. For the fourth one, we want to do page four. And then going back to this first one, we want to do page one. So now all that's been set up. So now we can tap to navigate through all of the different pages using this custom tab bar that we have set up. And that's how you'll create a custom tab bar in play. Thanks so much for watching this video.